Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with, and with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The greatest sermon ever preached was delivered by angels on this historic night. It was always been interesting to me that this message was delivered at night. It wasn't night because the sun had gone down. It was night because the world was surrendered in spiritual and mortal good. People were driven by greed, intolerance, and lust of power. Religion had become a device for the rich to be explored to, of the poor. Men robbed and swindled and profiteered under the cloak of religion. They even fought wars in the name of religion. In every arena of life, it was night when Jesus came. Things haven't changed. Today, there seems to be a moral light, night that has settled over our world. Sexual immorality, pleasure of driven people, lusting for money and power. The same as it was in the days when Jesus came 2,000 years ago. It is the darkest hour that Christ often comes. He brings the joy, the thrill, the peace, and the glory such as you have never known. When you and your loved ones give your lives to him. How has Jesus showed himself to you in your darkest hour? Thank you very much, Connie. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God indeed. You know, when we think about Christmas, it always comes back to the manger. But I really like the story of the wise men. You know, if we look around, any to know were pretty smart, weren't they? They listened to God. They were wise men. They were the only ones saved by the flood. Andrew, he was a smart guy. He led people to Jesus. David. Even though David had his problems, he was very smart. We, I think we said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many times that's been uttered over the world. Martha, Martha was very smart in that she invited Jesus to come and sit in her house. They were very close friends with Jesus. And Mary, she was very blessed in that she had the privilege to sit at the feet of Jesus as he taught. A very wise man, a woman, however you want to wish to say, individual. Solomon was probably considered one of the smartest people who ever lived. And then there were the wise men. The wise men probably would be considered those with college degrees at that time. They were scientists. They were uh, astrologers. Uh, they, uh, some of them dealt in, in fortune telling and all that kind of stuff. And they, they read the Bible though. They read the Bible and they knew there was going to be a Savior born. And they, they just knew it, and they followed the star. And on the way, to the, on the journey, they ran across a guy named King Herod. And King Herod was a pretty, pretty powerful guy. And uh, they went in and they said, we're here to see 
the King of Kings who's to be born. But that upset King Herod. You know, it's like saying, there's going to be someone more powerful than you. And if you think that doesn't upset someone, just watch politics a little bit. If someone comes along with a little more power, everybody gets crazy, right? Well, Herod got crazy. He said in his mind, you know, I want to be nice to these guys. And I'm going to invite them back once they find this, quote, Savior. Come back and we will feast and rejoice in their fire. Now, I want to ask you something. Didn't that sound pretty good at the time? A lot of bad stuff sounds good at the time. And so the wise men were very faithful in their journey. They followed the star, and they led them to Bethlehem. Now, he wasn't in a manger, of course. What I read was in, quote, like a house. He was under two years old. And... <clears throat> They, they had already figured that out. The wise men had already come up with that deal. And they stopped. And they knew where he was. And they found this little fellow. And for some reason, they had traveled across mountains, forded rivers, been cold, hungry probably, <coughs> because they weren't I doubt since they were scientists, and I'm not saying anything bad about scientists, sometimes they don't plan like they should for trips like that. And I'm sure they had major difficulties, but they brought gifts. They brought gifts. And they gave them to the Savior. Now, I want you to know something, and I want you to follow me carefully as we go through this. <laughs> They gave the gifts to Jesus. And all of a sudden, after they had seen Jesus, something spoke to their hearts. Something said, Hey, I don't think we need to go back to King Herod's way. Something seems wrong. Something is not right. And I'm sure they had a confab. They probably had uh, sat down and they said, you know, I know it's shorter going back the way of Herod, but I, I just don't feel right about it. I want to tell you a little secret. When you see Jesus, things of this world just doesn't seem the same. Yeah, there's a song that says the things of this world grow strangely dim. Well, I think the world grew very dim in their eyes at that time. They said, we're going back another way. Now those gifts, can a baby use gold? Can a, a baby use frankincense and myrrh? you know what? Those men were sent to make sure our Savior was a king. A baby can't use gold. Mama might, daddy might. You don't think it was used to help them travel? I doubt seriously if, if Jesus was born in a humble stable, they couldn't afford a holiday inn get a drift, they weren't really well equipped financially. And I think they got this, this blessing, and I call it blessing, that they could travel and miss Herod's terrible, vicious, vindictive killing of little babies. Okay? Those men were 
were sent to bless someone. Just like we're sent to bless people. You know, we don't have to bless them with money. Sometimes us being kind and loving to them is a great blessing. Sometimes it is money. Sometimes it's a home. Sometimes it's food. Sometimes it's a Christmas gift. Sometimes it's a kid at Cameron High School or elementary that needs something. Sometimes it's someone else dying of cancer. Sometimes it's a, a child that needs prayed for. That's having brain surgery. That's gifted. I think the gifts from this church praying for little Alex. I want to tell you something. I could never thank you enough. I could never thank you enough for the prayers. That little fella is so special to us. You know, it's one thing to be a king, and it's another thing to worship the true king, the Lord of our life. And sometimes we get so busy, and I know you're not busy at this time of year, we get so busy that we honestly miss the true meaning of Christmas. This is the time that this little baby was born to die for me and you. I don't care what any other religion say. All of their people are still dead. My Savior arose from that grave. It's historically proven, and in my heart, I know He lives. That's all I need. I don't need any more. I've read it. I've read it from the heathen. I've read it from the Christian point of view. I know it's for real. And that's all I need. But you know what? I need to slow down and stop and say, thank God that little baby was born. Thank God there's wise men who protected him. And here we go. And I hope and pray we get wise men who still protect Jesus Christ, the living Jesus Christ as our Savior in our country and in our world. Too many people want to be politically correct. I realize I'm not, and I realize I really don't care. Because it's more important for me to be correct with Christ than it is with anyone else. You know, the Holy Spirit had to speak to Joseph, didn't he? How many of you would like to take a little baby and take off on a journey and not have a house, he didn't have a mobile home meter, he didn't have a camper, he had to travel by foot and donkey. I mean, that is not the way I really did travel. And he had to go. He knew in his heart, God spoke to him and said, get out of here. And I'm sure he had this stuff, and I'm sure he got money for it, that he could barter with this gold and frankincense and myrrh. Stuff, gold, all the women like that. I mean, he could sell that to any man in the world. Frankincense and myrrh, people are still dying, and it's a perfume, and women still wear that. Now, he had to be wise, didn't he? figure out we'll do this, this, and this, and this to stay alive till we get to safety. He had to go to a foreign like country place for him to be safe away from who should be protecting the Savior of the world. Does that sound familiar to you folks? Do you think God would be 
Jesus would be protected in this world today in the United States of America. Hmm. Oh, Do you think there are Herods around that would like to see the baby Jesus killed? But I want to tell you something. Wise men still seek Jesus. And if they don't seek Jesus, I'm going to give you a friendly piece of advice. Don't hang around them. Witness to them, move on. My dad says, if you walk through a hog pen and you stay too long, you're going to start smelling funny. You're standing right at the edge of the hog pen and say, Pete, you need to straighten up. And then move on. You don't have to wait to the hog pen with that pig. Everybody understand that? Okay. God will speak today. I'm sure he's spoken to people this week, this month, maybe even today, and directed them where they should be and what they should be doing. Always follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Do not trust the words of men. As your pastor, I can only give you sound advice. I can't give you the Holy Spirit's direction. You understand what I'm saying? I can't do it. I wish I could. God is in control. And watch this. And if you let him, he will direct your path. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and we thank you for all you've given us. We thank you for our Savior. We thank you for wise men that still protect our Savior. We pray that you will direct us. Let our hearts be open to you, especially this time of year. And let us seek your face. And we ask this in your holy name. And they mean. We're going to sing here number 135. 134 is fine. Hey, I'm easy. I like it when Mary Evelyn changes it. You used to, you'd never do that. <laughs>
May he make your path smooth. May he make your direction sure. May the Holy Spirit always speak to you and protect you and guide you. And we ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.